Hello everyone and welcome to my talk, The Interfaces Behind Custom Widgets. I'll give you an overview of how you can use interfaces to tune the behavior of your widgets. About me then. My name is Jakob Alsén and I am a second year computer science student at Linköping University in Sweden. I do a lot with open source and I'm part of the fine team. I'm an amateur photographer and also a runner. You can get in touch through the Gopher Slack at Jackals or you can find my GitHub profile at github.com slash jackals. Well then, let's dive right in. So if we want to show something on the screen, we can use a canvas object. These are the most basic graphical objects that are available within Fine. They are simple and they are performant. We have eight uh, provided canvas primitives. We have the image, we have the rectangle, the line, the circle, the text, the raster, the linear gradient and also a radial gradient. And the canvas object is an interface which provides a min size function which returns the minimum size the object can shrink to, a method to move it, a method to get the position, a method to resize it, get a method to get its size, and then methods also to hide and show it and to know if it's visible or not, as well as the refresh method to update the, its content on the, on, the, on the screen. It's also worth noting here that containers are also canvas objects. So if you're interested in containers, how they work and also how you can use layouts within the containers, I strongly recommend that you have a look at my talk from FineConf 20, 2021 for more information. But let's say that we want to display our own object on the screen. Then we want to use widgets. And widgets are basically a canvas object with a render attached. So the widget interface just has to implement the canvas object and then also have a create render method, which re re returns a widget render. And the widget render interface is has a destroy method, a layout method, and a min size method, a method to an object method that will return all the objects that are to be rendered, as well as a refresh method. And widgets give access to more functionality because we can use some interfaces that are available within Fine for adding and controlling behavior. And Fine will then internally check if the widget implements these interfaces and automatically call the methods if available. Some examples that we have of the widgets are, for example, buttons and the form widget that you see here, which has some entries that will take text input when you type on your keyboard and so on. Here's another example of a card widget, which has some text in different sizes and a radio widget and an image. But how will we then implement our own widget? One of the easiest ways to do this is using a base widget. It's a helper that handles basic widget behaviors, basically. But you need to remember to call extend base widget that you see on line 22 there. What you basically do using a widget of base widget is that you embed it in a struct uh, and then the Go compiler will make sure that your my widget struct in this case implements everything that base widget implements. We can also use the and then we of course need to create a, a renderer. But we can then use the widget.simple renderer if we want to 
very easily just create a single widget render from a single canvas object if we don't need more functionality from the render. The example that we have here just basically wraps a canvas object inside the widget and then if it if the canvas object is a widget then we use the create renderer from that widget instead. But then how do we implement an interface as we've been talking about? And all we have to do is look at the interfaces that Finance has available, we'll talk more about that later, and then implement the method or methods that are listed. So let's show double tappable in this case. If we want to implement find.doubletappable, we want the double tapped method, which takes a pointer to a point event or a find.point event. Then when we implement this, we just add the double tap method and we'll just, for example, put a print that prints the position that it was double tapped at. And if we want to, which we in most certainly want to make sure that the, our code is working correctly, we can add a checks to make sure that the compiler will give us an error if the widget doesn't implement this interface. It's a bit of magic basically where it will try to cast um, nil my widget to the interface. Now that we know how we can use our, how we can implement interfaces and then use them, we can get started with some of the basic ones. For example, if we want our widget to be able to receive events when tapped, we can import the find.io slash find slash v2 package. And there we have find tappable, which has a tapped method. And this tapped method will automatically be called when the widget is tapped. And then find.double tappable, we've shown that before. and but that just has a double tap method, which will get called when the widget has been tapped twice in succession. And lastly, in this case, we have secondary tappable, which is similar to others, but this tapped secondary is instead called when either the mouse has right clicked on the widget, or if you have long pressed on a touch screen, for example. And if we want to move our view, we can use the find.scrollable interface, which implements a scrolled method that takes a pointer to a scroll event. This will get called, for example, when you use your scroll wheel. We also have the find.draggable, which has two methods, a drag method, which takes a pointer to drag event. And this basically means that the widget will be notified when you press and then drag with your mouse. And then the drag in method will be called when the drag is over. And we have some focus related interfaces as well. First we have disableable, which has enable, disable and disabled methods. This basically allows the widget to say if it's en enabled or disabled and then notif and then the focus manager will use this to make sure that the disabled widgets do not gain focus. And speaking about focus, we have the focusable interface. And here we have four methods, the focus gain method, which will be called when the widget receives focus and then focus lost, which will be called when the widget loses his focus and then while the widget is being focused we have the typed rune method which will be called which means that the widget will receive like a, the character that has been typed on a keyboard and then the typed key method which is similar to rune but it gives a key event with the actual 
key and not just the character. And then lastly, for the focus of inter interfaces, we have the tabable interface with a an accept tab method. And this means that a widget can tell the focus manager if it will want the tab keys as part of when it is focused or if those tab keys instead should be used for moving the focus within the application. And then lastly for the interfaces within the regular fine package we have the shortcutable interface which allows the widget to listen for shortcuts. So for example it will be notified when you have make a copy shortcut or paste and so on. And then we have validatable which allows the widget to say if its input is valid or not. It also has a set on validation changed method which allows parent widgets to hook into and be notified when this validation state changes. It's primarily used at the moment within the form widget which will make sure that the submit button is disabled if all of the inputs are not valid. Now moving on to the desktop package. We can import the find.io slash find slash v2 slash driver slash desktop package and it provides a driver specific to desktop computers or devices if you would like that. So we have the desktop.cursorable interface which allows the widget to change the cursor when you move over the widget. So for example you can make sure that you have this resize cursor when you're resizing something or you can have the I-beam cursor when selecting text, that sort of thing. We also have desktop.hoverable which allows the widget to more specifically see when a mouse is moved in and when the mouse is moved within the object and then also when the mouse is moved out. And then keyable is like an extension of find.focusable but with added methods for key down and key up. Key down will be called when a key is pressed down and key up will be called when the key is released. We also have the mouseable interface which is similar to keyable but for the mouse so you will receive an int the mouse down method will be called whenever the, a mouse button is pressed down and the mouse up will be called when the mouse press is released. And then lastly for all of our interfaces within find we have the find.io slash find slash v2 slash driver slash mobile package and this package provides a few interfaces that are more specific to the mobile side of find so for example we have the mobile.keyboardable interface which again extends find.focusable but with a keyboard method and this is I guess a bit similar to the cursorable within the desktop package but instead of specifying a cursor you specify what type of keyboard you want the mobile device to display. So for example if you want a single line keyboard where you don't want a return key that makes a new line but you want to submit this will allow you to do that. If you want a password keyboard to hide the password from uh, third-party keyboards and also numeric keyboards. And lastly we have the touchable interface which works a bit like the desktop interfaces we had there with that you but instead that you'll receive a touch down with the touch is pressed down, touch up when the touch is released and also a touch console if a touch has been cancelled. 
now we should talk about how we can put all this together and use it. So we'll want to implement dragging and scrolling in this interface, in this example I mean. And to do this I'll use some 3D wireframes using linear algebra. You don't need to know any linear algebra to understand this, but I'll just use it because we can quite easily show lines in three dimensions. So we want the view to be rotated when we move our mouse. We can do this by implementing the find.draggable interface that we've talked about before. And if we want to zoom in and out, we can use the scrollable interface to receive scroll events. So let's implement our line drawer by extending the base widget or adding the base widget into our struct, for example. And then we start with the dragged find.draggable interface. So the dragged method, we take our drag event and then we calculate some cosine and sinus into a matrix, a rotation matrix to make sure that we move around all the points or lines accordingly and then we call refresh on our widget to make sure that it is updated on the screen. And of course, as we showed before, the line drawer, uh, the find.draggable interface, I should say, implements two methods or has to implement two methods, dragged and drag end. And while we don't need drag end in this example to do anything, we need to add it to make sure that our widget satisfies the interface. And then we have scrolled. We implement the find.scrollable interface, take our scroll and move it to modify it so we get it inside the correct values that we want in our identity matrix that we then can scale our whole points with, all our points with. And then lastly, we refresh our widgets. And this is what we get. A set of lines in three dimensions that we can rotate around by using our mouse and then also use our scroll wheel in this example to magnify, if you want, the object. And all the code for this is available at github.com slash jackal slash line disp. And it, the linear algebra is implemented in using one of my packages called uh, linalg. Thank you all for listening. Uh, the API documentation for the fine standard interfaces within fine can be found at pkg.go/.dev. Slash find.io slash find slash v2 and the desktop specific interfaces are all within the driver slash desktop package and the mobile specific interfaces within the driver slash mobile package. Thank you.